years ago, my mom showed me her father's chauffeur license from 1937. I don't know much about this period in his life. By the time my mom showed up in 1952, my grandparents, with five of the six kids they would have, had already moved out of the area known as Hell's Kitchen and escaped to the suburbs of New Jersey. I never got to meet my grandfather. He passed away in 1974, four years before I was born, so little details like this about his life have always fascinated me. One day, while I was working in the city, I got the curious notion to find out if the building at the address listed on his license still existed. One of the things I love most about New York City is how the old and the new mingle on nearly every street. So I walked up to West 49th Street, where many of the structures from that era still stand, only to discover that the building at this address was not only gone, but it had been so since the 1950s, when it, along with several other buildings, were cleared to make room for a new school. While I was still able to walk along the street and see some of the buildings my grandfather would have seen, it seemed that the trail had gone cold. That was until I heard about an initiative the Works Progress Administration and the New York City Tax Department had undertaken between 1939 and 1941, where they sent photographers to capture photos of every building in the five boroughs in an effort to better assess property values. Nearly 700,000 parcels of land were captured by 32 photographers and hundreds of bookkeepers. Sort of like a low-tech Google Maps. In fact, that's exactly what a local programmer, Julian Boylan, thought. So he actually made a map you can use to explore this amazing gallery from the municipal archives. So back I went to West 49th Street, but this time in 1940. As I made my way down the street, I saw some familiar places. Fire escapes, cornice work, and window frames helped identify structures. And while the signs and shops might have changed, a good deal of the architecture from that period still remains. However, Try as I might, I couldn't quite find my grandfather's building using Julian's website. Fortunately though, I noticed something about the way the photo files were made. They corresponded with the codes used on the clipboards in the images. And once I figured out that naming convention, I was able to walk a few doors down to 423 West 49th Street, my grandfather's apartment. Looking at the original map, you can see the curve of the west wall towards the church. All along the street, you see a bustling neighborhood with lots of working-class folks carving out their piece of the American dream. A funny twist, though. When I decided to make this short film, I asked my mom to dig up that old chauffeur's license. She found it, but in the process discovered four more licenses with three additional addresses. Apparently, my grandfather moved around as much in his 20s as I did in mine. The licenses from the 1940s have him living around the corner on 10th Avenue. Today, that's just an empty lot. The license from 1933 has him living at 512 West 48th Street. Unfortunately, that building no longer exists either. In fact, it was already gone back in the 1940s. But on the license from 1934, he lists his address as 459 West 49th Street, which still stands today. And so in the end, I managed to find my grandfather's apartment on West 49th Street, just not the one I was looking for. I got to stand in the same doorway he once stood, look out at the buildings he would have seen as he headed out to work each morning. And while it might seem silly to put this much effort into finding an apartment my grandfather barely lived in, for me, little details like these help to bring a man I've only known in photos to life. I was talking to the whippoorwill, he says you got a corny trill. Bob White, what you gonna swing tonight? I was talking to the mockingbird, he says you are the worst he's heard. Bob White, what you gonna swing tonight? Even the owl tells me that you're fall, singing those lullabies.